Don't do this with bank feeds in QuickBooks Desktop. Hey there, my name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. First off, if this video helps you, please subscribe and also give it a thumbs up. Also head over to the QuickBooks University, sign up for the masterclass. Uh, got a lot of great stuff over there, a lot of great content uh, where I show you how to use QuickBooks from A to Z plus answer all of your QuickBooks questions. Okay, so let's get to this. We're going to talking about stuff not to do when you use bank feeds in QuickBooks desktop. First of all, if you are not familiar with bank feeds in QuickBooks, let's go to that now. I want to show you. If you go to the banking drop down menu, you're going to see the bank feeds right here. Now, if you have not set up bank feeds, I highly encourage you to do so. So in this video, we are assuming that you have already set up bank feeds and it's pretty simple to do. You just connect your bank and import the transactions. Makes your life much, much easier. So we go to the Bank Feed Center and going back to that a little bit, set it up for your credit card so you can see in the sample company file, they've got it for bank accounts and they have it for the QuickBooks credit card. So set it up for any of those accounts that you can connect to with your bank and it's gonna make your life much, much easier. Okay, so we see our accounts here. We've got uh, Anytime Financial, Anytime Financial, these uh, savings account, checking account, and then the credit card. So let's highlight the checking account. And you're going to see here, when you do have it connected, you are going to need to update so that it can download the latest transactions from your bank or credit card company. Now, because this is a sample company account, I cannot refresh because it's not connected to an actual bank. But the important thing that I want to show you in this video are the downloaded transactions. So you see here, this has six transactions waiting to be added to QuickBooks. So we're going to click the transaction list. Okay, so it brings up all these transactions that have been downloaded. And the REV means that the status is in review. So you need to review these transactions and either ignore them, add them to QuickBooks, change them, whatever the case may be. You can see that we have uh, an ATM withdrawal. We have a couple of checks, a deposit and bank service charge. Okay. Now across here, we've got what it was downloaded as. So this will be the bank description, the payee, the account, which you're going to have to assign to an account. The class, if you do class tracking, you can see payment or deposit and then the action. So when you click this drop down menu here, you're going to see quick add, add more details, select bills to mark as paid, match to existing transaction or ignore. Generally, the only time you're going to choose ignore is if it's already in QuickBooks and you can uh, ignore it, get rid of it. But what you want to do, and this is one thing you don't want to do, don't just blindly go through and ignore or blindly go through and quick add. You want to make sure that you put these transactions in properly. I say generally don't ignore because you can match it to an existing transaction. So for example, if this ATM withdrawal is already in QuickBooks, then just match it to an existing transaction. Okay. So if we say quick add, they must have an account assigned. Do you want to assign the uncategorized expense account to this transaction? No, this is what I see people. They make this mistake all the time. They just say yes and go through and click. They just check off all of these over here, click yes, put them into QuickBooks, and then it becomes a mess because you have to go back and categorize those expenses. So we do not want to assign that. And you can see there when I say no, it says this was not successfully added. All right, so let's go to this check here. Download it as blank. It's just a check number 239, so you're going to have to see what that check number was, who it was made out to, and then you're going to say the payee. Who is this paid to? So it gives you the, your list of all your customers and then all your vendors. So let's say this was made out to Maureen Lynn Fay, CPA, automatically assigns it to accounting. Okay, we're going to put in the class. All right, so we're going to say that this was overhead. Payment 1297, professional fees, 
and we are going to say quick add and there it goes now it's in there so you see when you do assign it to an account and you hit quick add you want to make sure it's the proper account don't just blindly put it to an uncategorized income or uncategorized expense so let's say in this case check 242 we're going to say that this was paid to uh let's say sloan roofing okay so sloan roofing and it says accounts payable all right so when it says accounts payable that means that it's paying a bill you do not want to just put it to accounts payable because then it will create a credit for sloan roofing so if it is a bill then we want to go to select bills to mark as paid so in this case it's going to say need your review we're going to say the vendor let's say sloan roofing right there accounts payable but we see a bill for 1047 so let's say that we did write the check for $3,200 and it was 1047 now nine times out of ten this is going to not be the correct bill to match it to because it's not the right amount but the point being that if you have a bill and this check rep represents a bill payment then you want to go through and select the bill to mark as paid to match it to that that transaction i see far too many people that go in and they just click quick add and then they've got a bill out there and they've got this payment and it's essentially a double expense so you don't want to do that okay so if this matched you would check off this bill and match it to the 1047 so if we do check that off you can see here total payments difference remaining 2153 so you want that difference to be zero okay so i'm going to cancel this because it doesn't match do you want to discard the changes yes okay so it doesn't do anything now let's say that we get to check 243 and we say that the payee we're going to go down to a vendor here let's say that it's office depot uh, account is going to be office supplies and you can just start typing office supplies class we'll say overhead 850 if we want to match to an existing transaction okay it says wait you're about to leave the screen but some transactions haven't been added i am going to go back because i want to uncheck that one and if we go back we say match to existing transaction let's say delete changes it's because I put in Sloan roofing okay so in this screen if we're going to match this check to an existing transaction let's say that we had already put in check 243 for 850 dollars it will show up in this list okay you can see we have an office de depot here it was a debit uh, and if the check was in here we would simply uh, match it to that exact payment and then we would say confirm match all right so i'm going to leave this and go back to this screen so the important thing to remember when you're using bank feeds in quickbooks desktop is to pay attention to whether it's it's something that you can match it to or a bill that needs to be paid or was paid that way you are keeping your record straight don't just blindly quick add and add the transactions to QuickBooks. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below, and I look forward to talking to you soon.